Pirate Outlaw is Blitwork's newest deck builder on the Nintendo Switch. Originally launching on mobile devices a few years back, this highly regarded roguelike offers quite a lot of new innovative ideas to the genre in a fully rebuilt console version which has zero microtransactions take this game to a whole new level. Deck builders have been getting more and more popular in recent years, and if you've been keeping up with my channel, I've reviewed just about all of them. So you may be familiar or unfamiliar with the fact that I'm relatively harsh on them if they don't stack up with the best ones out there or just simply try to copy Slay the Spire. And thankfully Pirates Outlaws may look at first glance like an STS clone, which there's plenty of them out there nowadays, but it adds so much more nuance and interesting mechanics while also being ridiculously stacked with the amount of content that it provides. First and foremost, if you play the mobile version you know that they added to it slowly and there might have been some pay options to increase the progress. The console version of the game removes all barriers and once you buy it, you pretty much have everything unlocked. 900 plus cards available, over 200 different relics, 16 unique all playable characters, all with their very own challenges, quests and even unlockable outfits to obtain a fully brand new hard mode that has you unlocking it after you basically reach 999 repute, which is something I'll be discussing in a minute, and more importantly, 7 fully playable maps to progress through, which add another 300 or so enemies, over 50 different bosses with many permutations, and of course, the tavern brawl mode and the arena. The breadth of this game is staggering for a deck builder and you're in it for the long haul if you're an avid fan of the genre. To say that there's tons of bang for your buck is an understatement and at just $17 to the price of launch, you're getting a steal. Story wise, there's very little here. Each of the characters has some basic exposition, but that's about it. You'll actually learn more about them as you take on quests and challenges, some which are specifically tailor made for a character so you can pick up on their goals and reasons for fighting through that. But as far as like fully realized cutscenes, that's not really what you'll find here, nor should you be expecting that. Aside from the quest, you also have bounties that earn you some extras as you take down the major bosses of each one of the maps. You also have feats, which are the equivalent of achievements, and trust me when I tell you, there's plenty here, even more to be obtained through hard mode. Some of the quests require you to take a specific route on each one of the maps, but doing so rewards you with unlockable card packs and even unique outfits as well so it's well worth taking a detour if you're aiming for that. That is to say, every run through each one of the maps can be just randomly focused on whatever character you chose and besting the perfect deck specifically focused to take down a challenge for a specific reward, so it provides plenty of reasons to try and try again, which is just all about this genre is all about. As you complete runs in a map, you can obtain cards that may be universally unlocked for all characters but of course keep in mind that not every single card is viable for a specific character. Each of the 16 unique characters start out with a unique deck, and they all have a skill or a passive uh, which will generally tell you what to expect from that character. Some of them are more range focused, others are melee focused, others will re rely on keeping the deck thin, others will choose to focus on taking damage so they could be able to dish it out, while others focus on like luck for example, or maybe being fully built around stacking curses in your deck. Essentially that is to say they're all unique and they all have multiple deck builds that you can try out to go after as it adds to plenty of variety. The starting deck will be unique for each one of the characters, but then you'll notice that there's certain cards that obviously synergize well with a any given character, so if you happen to come across them, you should definitely prioritize them first and foremost. You also have relics that support just about everything that you do, and if you happen to come across one that you don't quite like, you can sell them at the tavern. You may also buy and sell relics and even heals so you can essentially gain some of your health back with the uses of coins that you earn as you make your way through essential just combat encounters. You'll also see markets where you can sell cards or upgrade them if you choose to do so. Aside from these two very major and important locations in any given map, you of course have plenty of encounters and a wide variety of enemies that gradually get tougher as more bosses are defeated. You'll encounter plenty of events as well. 
These are unique instances where you can gain relics, upgrade cards, lose HP, gain HP, gain coins, pretty much the works. They work similarly as they do in Slay the Spire, and once you memorize them, you'll know what to expect. However, I will mention that there is a different set of variety of different events whenever you're exploring a brand new map, so certainly uh, new scenarios will continually appear in that way. Combat is relatively straightforward once you figure it out. Range cards have an ammo cost tied to them. As long as you have ammo, you can shoot. Each range card, of course, has their own traits, damage, or specific uh, abilities that you may want to take advantage of. Meanwhile, you have melee cards that have zero ammo cost tied to them, so you can certainly build a deck that is completely melee focused and spend all of your ammo on skills or defense. At the same time, you also have defense to stack up, which essentially mitigates all incoming damage. Skill cards, which there's a hefty variety of them, offer different effects and much more options to choose from. The similarities here to Slay the Spire are rather obvious with some unique differences. For example, once you defeat an enemy, you'll be presented with the option to pick up a card, and you must pick one. You can't skip it. You may re-roll the cards that are shown to you, but you're forced to take something. Mind you, relics can also appear as part of the rewards from a normal enemy, not just elites or even bosses. So if you're focused on keeping a thin deck using the aforementioned taverns and markets, it's certainly important. This of course entails planning your route accordingly. Enemies are different as well. They serve a specific purpose for either hindrancing you with debuffs or other shielding one another, maybe some of them focusing on damage and the works. And once you start experiencing some of those later maps or chapters as they're actually called, uh, you'll start to notice that enemies will do more uh, and a bigger wide variety of attacks and debuffs and things like that. So you certainly want to keep your eyes peeled as the difficulty really does skyrocket in the later maps. Speaking of progression, you'll earn repute. This currency is earned in game after you finish a run successfully or not. Characters are unlocked just about after every 500 or so or a thousand repute for each one. So let's say after 1500, 2500, 3500 and so on. And card types for specific play types are also unlocked as you stack up repute. Keep in mind that you can't spend it. It's just a currency that signifies how much time you've actually uh, spent playing the game and how far you've gotten. Alongside the seven normal chapters and maps that I've mentioned before, you also have two other brand new game modes. First is the arena. This is a floor by floor encounter focused game mode where you defeat a pair of enemies, then are presented with the typical choices you'll see in a map, but simplified so you can basically just do things like upgrade or remove cards, perhaps use the shop at a cost or pick up a card, maybe some loot, whatever the case is. It provides a hefty variety and tons of unlockables in its own right. Lastly, you have the tavern. This mode lets you pick card packs that synergize with one another as you take down enemies in back to back waves. It feels almost never ending and you basically uh, have quite a lot of challenge here on this one. It's certainly one of the most difficult ones that I came across as I was playing uh, this review copy. And it does provide a wild amount of options for you to be able to synergize cards with one another, as well as to be able to see pretty much all the enemies if you're focused on one specific map type that you enjoy the most, or you maybe just want to unlock all the cards for that one specific map. So you get to see a lot of stuff if you're choosing to engage uh, with the Tavern Brawl. If you haven't picked up on it by now, Pirates Outlaws is a fantastic deck builder which kept me coming back since I received my review copy. There's not that many games that I'm actively thinking about playing while I'm doing other things, and this one managed just that. Thinking about how to use another character in a specific way, or figuring out what I did wrong to lose a specific run right before a boss, which trust me, it drove me crazy because it kept happening over and over again, especially in the arena after you get to like level 30 or so, you certainly want to keep you know, getting those rewards if you can keep it up. Everything about this game just keeps you coming back and for a very good reason, it's a damn good time. I would like to thank the developers over at Blitworks for providing me a review copy, 
but not only that, for being so active when I emailed them some feedback because I did find some very minor bugs that I certainly reported back to them. And they uh, confirmed to me that they will be providing a day one patch, certainly becoming available when the game launches. So hopefully those minor issues that I encounter will be addressed 100%. I would also like to quickly mention that performance on the Nintendo Switch is seamless. You shouldn't have to worry about performance issues. I never had the game uh, like crash on me. I never had any sort of like weird stuff happen. Just minor cursory things that I reported to the developers and hopefully they get addressed. Nintendo Sphere gets Pirate Outlaws on the Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up, and as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya!